On the screen, you see a snippet of the completable future class. Some of the most important methods are listed here, though not all of them. We have talked about quite a lot of these methods. Each of the methods, then apply, then compose, then accept, then run, then combine, have two other overloaded methods for running async version and to accept an executor. The method then run is similar to then accept, with the difference that it takes a runnable and not a consumer. In other words, there is no input to it. It's simply running a block of code. The completable future class has a couple of static methods to deal with multiple completable future objects, all of and any of. They are convenience methods, and these methods do have some quirks. So be aware of the finer details when you use them. Let's take a look. On the screen, you see an example of the method all of. We start four async tasks in parallel, task one, task two, task three, and task four. Once they are kicked off, you get a handle to four completable futures, future one, future two, future three, and future four. Now you want to do some activity after all four tasks are complete. Important point to remember here is that your use case demands that you need to wait for all of them to complete, even if one of them fails. We know of one way to handle this, using the then combine method. But we can just as well use the all off method to do this. The all off method will return a new completable future. This new completable future will complete only after all of the four futures are complete. Even if one of the four completes exceptionally, then the new completable future completes exceptionally. One fact to remember here is that if the first task completes exceptionally, it will wait till all the tasks are completed and then complete the new completable future exceptionally. Be aware of this because in some use cases, you may need to handle the exception immediately on any errors. This is the nuance that I talked about before. Also note the returning type of the completable future. It's void. This seems a bit strange at first because a natural choice would have been a list of objects to represent the responses of the tasks. It's not a big deal though, because in the next stage of the pipeline, you can simply use the join method on each future to get their responses. In the example, I have used the join method instead of the get method on the individual futures. Both methods join and get will return when the future completes, exceptionally or not. Either will work, but the join method will throw only runtime exceptions. Many developers like that. The get method, on the other hand, will throw some checked exceptions that you have to handle. If you recall, the get method comes from the implementation of the future interface and hence the checked exception. Why is the join method acceptable to use here? Does it not wait? Well, the answer is no, because once the returned completable future is complete, we are sure that all the four are complete as well. And so the get or join methods on those four will simply return immediately. At the end of the pipeline, I have added an exceptionally method to handle any exceptions. We have seen that before. Now let me give you an example of when you can use all of. Let's say you're tasked with installing Java runtime in 500 machines using Java. If you write a task to install Java in one machine using SSH programmatically, you can use completable future to represent each one of these tasks. You don't care if one of them fails. You can then simply use completable future all off method and handle the results as each result comes in from the machines. Let's now look at an example of any of. This returns a completable future which completes when any one of the futures is complete, exceptionally or not. In the example, we have our famous four tasks, task one, two, three, and four. 
you pass these to any of method which returns the completable future of type object. Now why object? Because the four futures may be returning responses of different types and so we don't know which one of them will be completed first. Now this makes sense. We then use then accept to accept the completed result and use exceptionally to handle errors. Note here that you would have to cast it to the right class to actually work with it. Here I'm simply printing the result, so I don't care. If your use case demands that you handle the first successful response, then don't use this method. That's the quirk in this method. And so I would imagine that this method is hardly used. 